Super excited to geek out with you today with Daniel, who is the creator of uh, the Curl Project. It's a massive project that you've probably all used. Daniel, please take over, give yourself an intro. Hello, I'm Daniel. I work on Curl full time. I started a project a long time ago. I've been doing internet transfers and uh, HTTP related stuff, open source since the 90s. I do a lot of open source. I work open open source full time. So yeah, that's my, my life. This is amazing. So how, when did the project start? So I, I actually released it under the name Curl in 98. So in March, 1998. Okay, and what gave you the idea to, to start it? At that point, I renamed the previous project that I was working on. So I actually worked oh, on yeah. it before. But I, I once started uh, because I wanted to download HTTP to make a currency rate translator for my IRC bot that I was working on. And, and did you keep using this? When you renamed it, did you continue with the same technologies? Yes. I renamed it because my previous names weren't really suitable. So I just, I, I called it, before that it was URL get. But you know, I added upload support to it. So no, it's not a get anymore. How do you, so you work on the Curl project full time. I'm gonna go straight in for this because I know this is what people really wanna know more about because they love open source. They love working in open source, but they do struggle with, with finding the time, finding the funding. First, I wanted to just rewind a little bit. So I, I, sure. I started Curl then a long time ago and I did it as a spare time project for many, many, many years until I finally one day decided to, I wanted to give this a shot to do this full time. And then I struggled a little bit. How, how do I do that? How to, can I actually convert my spare time project into a full time work? And then I decided to, to join my friends at, at this company called Wolf SSL and sell, sell support for Curl really. So keep on giving it away exactly like before, but pretty much selling support services, contract work, whatever anyone wants around Curl to companies who wants to pay for it. Nice. So primarily that is uh, companies paying for support because they had issues and they want to make sure that uh, everything goes smoothly forward. Yeah, I think that's great. A lot of, a lot of companies do that, like uh, they provide support for their tools so you can use it for free. It's completely open source, but yeah, provide like professional support for that. And I think that's, that's a really good model to have and clearly it works. So what's your background then? So let's wind back a bit further. And uh, so how did you get into tech? I had a friend who got a Commodore 64 in the early 1980s. You know, I'm, I'm old. So, so and, and I sort of um, got to know him and I got, to, got into that interest. Oh, wow, Commodore 64, you can actually, you know, program computers. Then in 1985, I bought my own Commodore 64. And I actually already then very quickly realized that it's a really fun thing, you know, to program it, to actually make it do what I want. Uh, so that my interest started then and it's, I learned programming was well, started out with basic in the early years then and, and then I switched into assembly I did games and demos on the Commodore 64 and I was hooked and then I switched to other computers and it went on to different operating systems and I sort of just went on so I, I've always been very uh, sort of interested in, in programming and development and I thought it was enjoyed it ever since and I've just kept on going. How's it like seeing programming language mature and grow over time? What, what language did you uh, start off with on the Commodore 64? Oh, you love me because I'm so conservative. So I'm just stick, stuck to old stuff. Well, I started yeah, because I got into the Commodore 64 first and that was, it has basic on board, right? So you learn that Commodore basic and that, that was, I think it was a good intro in learning how, how programming actually works when I was in my uh, teens then. And then I got into assembly and assembly is completely different, but assembly is good in another way because then you actually learn how CPUs work and how they're actually, you know, really, really low level stuff works. So that, that was fun. And then after that, I pretty much switched to things in C in the early 1990s. And I've mostly stuck to C programming since then. I know other languages and I've, I'd sort of dabble with other languages too, but curl is written in C, right? And, and some of my other projects I, I work on are also written in C. I really enjoy working on uh, these kind of fundamentals library um, sort of things and for, for doing fundamental libraries for systems that C has been the dominant language and really has been the only viable language for many years. So now we're starting to see that you can actually go with other languages, but that's more like the, the 
last five years or so. Uh, what's the most interesting place you've seen Curl implemented? That's a hard question to answer because Curl is literally everywhere, right? <laughs> So where isn't curl? I think one of my favorite one of my favorite devices, at least, is this um, kitchen mixer thing. I have a photo somewhere. It's, so it's a you know it's a blender, I think, sort of for the kitchen with a little screen on it. You can have it in, your, so it can bring up some recipes and you know how to cook food and stuff. And that little thing runs curl, and I like oh that. Oh my but, word, that is crazy! See, I'm thinking you know web API kind of geeky people. But it's used in like a consumer yeah, product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the that's the major part of curl. You know, every TV, every car, every printer, every fridge, every blender. <laughs> so whatever wow. you can think of that is connected to the internet has a high likeliness of having curl somewhere in there. This every mobile a... phone, every tablet. Wow, like well done. Like everyone say, like well done. But the responsibility for for your project now so now you can't you know obviously you don't want to break it but you know to to really make sure it doesn't have any kind of i don't know backward breaking sometimes i think you gotta be really think really clearly about that do your versioning right i guess to make sure you don't affect any of these products yeah and of course sort of doing releases get more and more scary the more and more responsibility <laughs> and and, and and you know, the, the, it gets wider and wider. So yeah. How can I contribute to Curl without any C knowledge? I'm sure beginner join GitHub 10 days ago. Is, <laughs> is that possible? Can they help with say documentation oh, or absolutely. testing? Absolutely. I, I think I, I actually make a, a really best effort to make sure to remember and give credit to anyone who helps out in the projects. What I call in Curl, we call contributors that are people who actually help out in project. You don't have to be a committer to be a contributor. You can report a bug. That's also a way to help out, right? You answer questions. You can, and then if you want to contribute exactly, you know, in, on GitHub with changes, we have a lot of documentation ends up being, you know, typos or wrongs or maybe not clear enough. There's a lot to do that hasn't have to be C code. C code, of course, is sort of if you want to work on the actual product, but there, there are a lot of other things as well. That's awesome. So everyone, yeah, get involved, have a look. But remember, add value. So putting, um, if someone's raised a bug and you can confirm it with a different platform or different version, then that adds value. But be careful to spam yeah. maintainers because uh, they get a lot of notifications already. You must get right. a lot of notifications, right? <laughs> I do. I do get a lot of them. But you're right. I mean, just, you know, someone confirming, I get this bug as well on this other platform, or it doesn't happen anymore on this version yes. when I tried this. For example, you know, helping out narrowing down things. It, it'll help someone who then eventually will look at the code, or maybe we can uh, agree that it's not a bug. We just didn't agree on the function. What language would you choose if you were to make curl again from scratch, like today? Since I'm such a conservative and I'm stuck in the sea world, I, 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 I guess I had a little bit of my blinders on, so I, I'm not sure I have the, the best possible, you know, view of the language landscape to, to say this properly. But I, I would imagine that Rust would be a good contender. Okay, that's uh, ultra half uh, guest Rust. Yeah, I think so. Maybe a few years ago it would have been Go. But yeah, Rust is definitely seems to be getting more. Um, what Dev Overflow saying go. I think Rust seems to be getting more popularity now. Um, is there a place you know they use curl, but you wish they didn't? I think that of course we have a little bit too much things that are, you know, the internet of shit, you know, internet of things that are everywhere that are crappy. You don't then they don't upgrade their, you know. And I think a lot of our products today are a little bit too trigger happy or too eager to get network connectivity and internet connectivity and therefore curl connectivity. But I think that's inevitable. We are going to have even more things connected to networks and the internet going forward. So I don't think whatever I say now is going to stop this development. I think we're going to go even further. I think everything today that we have more or less is going to be internet connected sooner or later and then they will run curl as well. So you, apparently you tweeted that uh, VW was using curl in their cars. That's just amazing. Actually, I, a few years ago, I went through I, uh, out of the top 25 car brands I've, in the world, 22 of them ship curl in their cars. <laughs> That's, that, so. that is crazy. Wow. So basically, if you have a, a car made the last few years, it's more or less guaranteed that you have curl in it. So Daniel, do you have a YouTube channel? I do. Oh, you do? Oh, let I me do. check it out. Yes. So yeah, I do 
occasional Twitch live coding, but more importantly, I do, since a while back, I do release presentations. Of, if you see that, you see my release presentations of curl releases. So I do sure, a new yeah. video every new release. I was looking at that, like you're really on top of your pull requests and your issues. I mean, this is amazing. Yeah, that's a goal. It says, okay, uh, this audience haven't heard it. You asked about, you know, these easy newbie issues perhaps to uh, point people to, you know. But uh, mostly we fix all the issues. The easy issues we fix really fast. So okay. most of those issues we have now, they're, they're you know, the hairy ones. <laughs> they're what? not that easy to fix. So, but, but uh, also, uh, to be fair, I, uh, we don't keep issues around that are, for example, feature requests, or if they're just l lingering around too long, we move them to the to-do or known bugs issues. So I think it makes the, the list easier to manage as, as, as for me as a project manager, and I think it, it's more honest. So things we actually don't, we are not going to work or fix on anytime soon. We move them to the uh, known bugs list instead, because it's not actually an issue we're working on. It's more like a someone is going to fix it eventually some point in the future. And you know, I've tried this so many times and it <laughs> sort of, and I've failed roughly as many times as I've tried. So uh, yeah, it's, it's really, really hard. So I'm more or less giving up. I'm, I'm more trying to explain curl as an internet transfer engine, but people don't know what an internet transfer is. <laughs> you know, depending on who I'm talking to, I'm trying to explain it as sort of a, a little piece in, uh, in an application that transfer data over internet. In addition to, I guess, the get, the post, the put with the headers, are there any other features that we might not yeah, realize are there? Uh, yes. Right now we have 243 command line options to curl. So, and most of them can be used in together with other command line options, right? How often do you receive negative feedback? I don't get a lot of negative com uh, feedback, actually. So uh, most of my feedback, too, they're mostly just confused or strange, you know? Right. So I, I get, for example, questions from people that find my email in their car, you know? And when someone emails me, when they found my email in their car, you can know for sure that they're asking about something I have no idea what they're talking right, about. Right, I see, so you know? yes. Has Curl been used in any of like the NASA projects that have gone to space? It has, the Mars really? helicopter landing. Yes, it's there. That's so, amazing. Yes, that's, that's awesome because it suddenly made us reach another planet. And another, you know, sign of approval that actually it works and people can trust it and it can be used for safely and, and, and you know. Um, how do you balance time with your, I guess, family? So, you know, work-life balance? Well, it's easier now when I do it full time, right? Because now I can actually you know, spend my entire work sure. day on it because it's my full time job. Since a very long time back, I've established a tradition with doing my spare time programming late at night. I've done that for, well, maybe 30 years by now. And of course, that gives me a lot of time to do whatever I want. So it has worked out really fine without me interfering too much with my family or their uh, life. What is the next big thing that you see Curl embracing? The next big thing that we already are embracing that not, it's not quite there yet is HTTP3 support, which okay. we're, it's there, but it's not complete. And then we're discussing a possibility of supporting web sockets going forward. And if we Ooh. do that, that's a pretty big chunk of things to take care of. Do you find the project is giving you is give, giving you more work or have you now got on top of all the issues and pull requests so as they come in you can kind of keep on top of it you've got a good like workflow you've got a good team I'm guessing you've got other maintainers on the project that are helping you as well yes I do so yeah we're a bunch of people that are actually around for the long term so sometimes I feel like I'm real on top of things, you know, I'm, I'm shrinking down the list of issues and then, oh, look at this right now. We're below, uh, we're someone in the area of 40 something open issues and pull requests. And suddenly I'm up in a total of 100 and 150. I feel like, oh, I will never get around to manage all of this. I'm the only one who has the luxury to actually spend my entire day, day you know, thinking and, and fiddling with curl stuff. The others are working on curl they do it in their spare time or as sure. part of some work where they you know they use curl for a product and they just want to do something to make sure their product runs better so i do everything i can to make sure that i don't have any secrets in the project there's nothing you know i don't have any particular magic knowledge in the about the project or in the project that i haven't documented or made available online or publicly so have you anyone ever 
offered you money to buy curl from you, like transfer it to their organization or to their personal account, didn't they? Okay, no. interesting. I we're not under any organization and we're yeah. not run by any major company. So we're very free to do whatever we want in this project, which I think is good. I appreciate yeah. that. You do have um, backers um, yes. on, on, the, on here as well. So yeah, so we have a lot of different ways to, 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 to do funding, really. You can then sponsor Curl. You can go to, you can go to GitHub sponsors or you can go to opencollectives.com slash curl and you can sponsor Curl directly. And we have a lot of sponsors like that. So we get a lot of funding into the Curl project like that. That's funding that goes into the Curl project and we use that, those, that money primarily right now to fund the bug bounty program. And we will also use it to fund you know, developer meetups and stuff like that. But we have sort of made a pledge that we we'll use it to enhance the project or whatever the project thinks we need the money for, we, we use it for, for, for the project's sake. For we can say that Curl is, is a big project in that it's used widely, it's old and it's everywhere, everybody knows it. It's an easy, easygoing and a friendly and approachable project. It's really easy to help or contribute. Since it's entirely open source, it also gets to this position that I don't know the users and I don't know how many are using it and nobody's telling me about them using it so it's just you know one day you realize that oh this thing is using curl and oh this particular thing happens to be used by a billion people or two or another planet or something thank you again so much for taking the time to come onto the stream and share your experience your knowledge your, your energy and your success, because I think it's just so motivational to hear that the open source project has done so well.